Hi, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Rachel. And we've just begun our retirement journey. We hope you join us. Part of our plan for retirement was to move from Ontario, where we live most of our lives, to the west coast of Canada, specifically to Vancouver Island. And in doing so, we were shocked. Shocked. Hi, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Rachel. Come join us as we find exciting ways to enjoy our retirement lifestyle. If you're new here and you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. Vancouver Island is known for its mild climate, stunning scenery, outdoor activities and wildlife, beautiful gardens, and thriving arts community. The most western part of Canada, this large island is 100 kilometers wide and 460 kilometers long, and because of the mountainous terrain, it takes two and a half hours to drive across and at least six hours to drive its entire length. With a total population of 864,000, there are several towns and cities all over the island. On its southern tip is Victoria, British Columbia's capital with its boat-lined inner harbour, neo-baroque parliament buildings, the grand Fairmont Empress Hotel and English-style gardens. The island has some of the tallest and oldest spruce trees and cedars in the world with some over 310 feet tall and over a thousand years old. The mountains on Vancouver Island are part of the Insular Mountain Range, where peaks in Strathcona Provincial Park rise to elevations of 6,500 feet, with the highest just over 7,200 feet. Vancouver Island is thought to have the densest population of black bears. It's home to over 7,000 different water species and over 200 species of migratory birds. Meet the only endemic mammal species to British Columbia, the Vancouver Island marmot, one of the rarest mammals in the world, which is currently endangered. From the south up to Comox Valley, there are 37 wineries and more than 40 farmers markets. Residents and visitors alike can take advantage of the many activities, including diving and surfing, trail hiking, whale watching, boating, fishing, kayaking, golf and cycling, and many more. Art galleries and shops showcase local artist creations. Island cuisine features fresh seafood, including sockeye salmon, halibut, oysters, and spotted prawns. So what shocked us about Vancouver Island? First thing is the amazing tranquility and the natural environment and the proximity to wildlife. Yeah, it's amazing. You, you, you feel it as soon as you get off the ferry, the airplane. You can smell that fresh air that's coming right over the mountains. You've got trees everywhere that you just don't see in Ontario. It's certainly the eastern part of the country. And you've got the ocean right at your doorstep. It's such a quiet and peaceful environment, yet we live in a small city. And so we have access to everything we need, yet right at our doorstep we have nature right there. We can walk to the end of our street and see whales, humpbacks and orcas. Uh, we see bald eagles, golden eagles, and of course the black-tailed deer are all over the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, uh, you know, when you first arrive in a location, you meet people. So we met people and they say, you know, welcome to paradise. And you think, yeah, yeah, welcome to paradise. Well, it pretty much is, from our perspective at the moment, it is paradise. Welcome to another day in paradise. Yeah. Another thing that shocked us was the amazing diversity of plants on Vancouver Island. We're in a zone, I think it's 7B, which is far more versatile than Ontario where we used to live. So we have all sorts of plants that we're learning about, rhododendrons and camellias, winter heather and dogwood trees, and we even have a palm tree in a our front yard. Palm tree. Now that shocked me because here we are coming from a, a land where you know it snows, it's minus 30 degrees Celsius or minus 15 Fahrenheit. And there's nothing like a palm tree there. But here, right outside our window, we got a 20-foot palm tree. Now, there's no coconuts, but there's certainly palms. And the other thing that really shocked me was you can grow all sorts of trees here that you just can't grow anywhere else in Canada, including, with a little bit of care, lemons. Who would have thought you could grow lemons mm -hmm. in Canada? Feels tropical, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that shocked us is the amazing climate that we have here. It's the most temperate climate in all of Canada. And I'll admit, I mean, one of the, th the reasons we left where we were is we still got mm -hmm. out and love to do our walks and get out into the, the trails. But when you're doing that in the winter, in the shoulder months, you never know where that bit of snow has ice under it. And even though the, we're not, I would say, old yet, the last thing you want to do is slip and fall and then you're, you're laid up for a while. Here, in this climate, 
I don't. I think they've outlawed ice. There is no ice. <laughs> it's it's just a nice, relatively warm climate, and it is a temperate climate that you just you just don't see. And we are in a location called Oceanside, and Oceanside. And this is one thing that did shock me, is apparently the most temperate climate in Canada, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't even know before we got here. I knew it was nice. I didn't know it was that nice. And we do have mountains all around us, so they do protect us from some of the weather that comes from the West. And so we have a very special climate here, and we're really lucky to live in a we, place like this. We are. I mean, yeah. there's, yeah, on, on the Vancouver Island side, on the West side, you know, you will get a lot of wind because it's coming right off the Pacific. Mm -hmm. We're on the East side, so we're sheltered by all those coastal mountains. And it really gives us that extra little added piece of good weather when even though the West is getting blown, we're really not getting much as far as mm -hmm. wind. So for us, we're used to dry, cold winters in Ontario and wet, humid summers in Ontario. And here, it's kind of the opposite. We do have hot, not very hot, but hot <laughs> summers that are more dry. And the winter has more rain on the West Coast, of course. So we have a more wet, humid winter, which is different. It is. It's very different. And our temperatures are typically around 25 to 27 in the summer. Celsius. Celsius. Mm -hmm. Um, now, in the interior, both in the interior of BC on the mainland and on the island, it'll get much warmer. Mm -hmm. But here we get that temperate nature of the, the ocean, yeah. just leveling out those temperatures, and yet you get so much sun, which I really didn't expect. The amount of sun that we get here in the summer is breathtaking, I think. It is, and we are farther north than we were in Ontario. Uh, so we're at a higher latitude, so that means our days in the summer are much longer. Yeah. Uh, and a little bit shorter in the winter, actually, too. Right. So, I mean, I think it's around 9.30 p.m. sun sets uh, in the middle of the summer, June 21. So it's, and with all that sun, I think we've got to harness it. So I think upcoming, we will be talking about solar energy and how we're going to be putting solar energy on this house and seeing how much we can generate. Just like we did on our boat. Just we, like we did on our boat. The scale will be bigger. Um, and the savings will be so much more. So that's something to stay tuned for. Stay tuned for that future episode. The next thing that shocked us about Vancouver Island is the amazing, stunning, and diverse scenery. Yeah. Anywhere from majestic mountains to vast oceans, sandy and rocky beaches, ancient rainforests, cascading waterfalls. It's, it's everywhere. We, we can get in our car and literally drive 10 to 15 minutes and you're in the beginnings of the mountains, you're into these cathedral type forests with old growth that's just majestic. You're, you're sitting in amongst trees that have been there for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Go a little further, you're down into the midst of those mountains, you can see snow top mountains, mm -hmm. rivers running right beside the road, and go a little further and now you're in one of the best surfing beaches in all of Canada, and I would suggest perhaps one of the best ones in North America, yeah. um, in Tofino, in Akula. Yeah. So you, and that's right at our doorstep, relatively speaking. So it's, uh, it's an easy thing for us to take advantage of these things, whereas before, we... It was a bit more of an effort. It was a yeah. bit more of an effort. We're yeah. in a bit more of an urban area, yeah. and there's a lot more people where we were, and um, it, it really is, in a very good way, a shocking thing that you can... Get in your car and in 5, 10, 15 minutes, you can be at waterfalls and mm -hmm. hiking through some mm -hmm. really spectacular scenery. And I have to say, in the neighborhood where we are, there are a lot of beaches. Yeah. Um, and they're vast beaches. When the tide goes out, there's a huge beach. So there's always a lot of people enjoying it. And people come here from other parts of Canada on vacation. So I feel like maybe we're on vacation <laughs> kind of all the time. I think we kind of are. I think we're, we're, we've got to get into vacation mode all the time now. Um, but the, the one, some of these beaches are so large that you can be there with lots of people, but you never feel as though you're crowded in any way. It's just a beautiful, long, sandy beach that just gently gets into the water. It's a, it's a really nice place. Very special place to live. So one other thing that shocked us was the cost of transportation. Maybe not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you've heard a lot of things that shocked us in a very positive way. And there's one, and maybe maybe more, but certainly one that shocked us in a not so positive way. Yeah, the cost of fuel is definitely more here. And maybe because we live on an island, and that's yeah. part of the privilege of living on an island, things might cost a little bit more, and fuel is one of them. What I will say, even though fuel costs more, and you're right, it is, I think, because we're on an island, 
we travel less. So in retirement, we're not driving as much That's true. Um, as we used to. I used to, in my working life, I used to commute one to two hours one way. Um, so, you know, two to three, four hours in one day, every day. And that's a lot of driving. That's a lot of gas. And right now, I mean, we hardly drive, relatively speaking, at all. I mean, there's groceries and things every normal person would do, but we're no longer commuting. There's no need to commute anymore. That's true. Um, so the other thing that's sort of tied to that is when we're driving up and down the island, of course, there's an island highway that goes north and south on this island. And it's not really in a highway that we're used to in terms of, you no. know, there's actually lights on this highway. You have to stop in various towns, but that's the way this island was built. And of course, the communities up and down the island are on the coast. So they're more sort of, you know, along the coast rather than a circular dot. So yeah. um, you end up having traffic lights. And so it takes longer. So when I drive, um, you know, to see family in the southern part of the island in Victoria, you would think it would take about you know, an hour and a half, and it takes over two hours. Yeah. So that's because of all the stopping. Yeah, it's not so much the traffic, it's just the stopping. Now, you go north, there are no lights. That's true. But it's just a straight highway. But there's not there's not as much, you know, to see. The, 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 there's not as much population. Yeah, and the populations are, are spread out yeah, as you go further that's north. True. But you know what? Stopping every once in a while on a highway is really no big yeah. deal. And it really drives the fact that we are on an island and really, we're on island time now. <laughs> and the only thing I would say is, you're not in a rush. There are actually scenic stops that you can take mm -hmm. on that highway. So if you're getting to a point where you're a little tired or you want to stop, pull over. You can look at some, again, some really spectacular things. The one other thing I would say about driving here, which is associated with it, where we were driving, we we're in a city that's a million plus people. And most, if not, not every, but a lot of stop signs and stoplights the person in front of you would be on their phone. And I don't know how That's many true. times I had to give, you know, a little beep just to let them know that I'm behind them and we need to go because the light's been green for half an hour. Whereas here, um, and I don't know whether it's just because there's fewer people, but my goodness, no one seems to be on their phone when you actually get to a stoplight or you get to a stop sign and the lights change so much quicker. Mm -hmm. Now that may just be our perception of, you know, us in retirement. Perhaps. But it was one of the things that I really noticed when you're driving is, I don't have to remind everybody that they're actually in a car driving when they're sitting in the stoplight. You don't see people texting and driving here. No, but uh, regardless, um, it is, it's, a, it's a breath of fresh air when you come here. And again, that may be because of just fewer people here. But regardless, it was, a, it was one thing that did shock me when we were driving. It was not, not something I expected. Mm -hmm. Continuing with a little bit of the transportation discussion, the one thing that did shock us a little bit on this island is getting off the island. Mm. So, yes, you know, we talked about gas prices and we talked about some of the highways, but you eventually have to get off the island if you want to travel, and we do travel. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things you can do, uh, but they're not, let's say, cheap compared to if you live on the mainland where you can just jump in your car and get to the airport. So You have to plan it. You really do. Yeah, so yeah. you're taking a ferry. And you have to book that. You do, or you can do a walk-on, which you can just show up for. Mm -hmm. If you're in the off-season, you can typically show up and you can get on the ferry. Mm -hmm. If you're in the prime time tourist season, you better book it. Otherwise, you're not getting on. And sometimes they have issues with ferries. So, you know, you might have booked a ferry and then they cancel yep. it because there's a problem with mechanics or sometimes well, staffing or whatever. And sometimes this wonderful weather we have turns on you. Mm -hmm. And you'll get, you know, 60, 70 km an hour winds coming down the strait. Rough seas. They don't run those ferries. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's not perfect. And most of the time it's fine. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get on a ferry, then you've just got to watch for those things. The other is air travel. There is an airport on the island. There's a couple. And they do fly relatively large planes in. And typically, it does cost a bit more if you're going to want to leave the island. So it's something to keep in mind You know, when you're looking at retirement. What do I plan on doing in retirement? Mm -hmm. And if that involves a lot of travel, just bake that into the overall view so that you're not surprised when you start thinking, I need to go A to B. <laughs> hadn't figured out that I actually need to take a ferry or I need to take that little hop off an island first. Yeah, you really need to understand what it means. And, you know, of course, when we were doing the Great Loop on our boat, living on our boat for a year, um, we did come home twice during that trip and yeah. we chose to fly to the island just simply to save time. Um, but there are little airlines that you can take to mm -hmm. small regional airports, and those are reasonably economical, actually, they are. and very efficient and kind of fun to fly. Well, the, the, the most fun mm -hmm. I think we've had flying to the island Recently, was we took a float plane. 
Yeah. And these aren't just float planes that you know are little little uh, side jobs. These are ones that are actually run passenger as a business. They're passengers. Yeah. They run on a schedule, and you can pick them up at the airport, South Terminal in Vancouver, and you get on that float plane and you take off. You only fly 500 feet above the water, mm -hmm. but you fly directly into a town called Nanaimo, which is in the middle of the island. And to their harbor. Right. Yeah. It was a great flight. That was, you know, turn it into a little bit of fun. Try something different. And that's something we do when we try and, yeah. you know, go to and from the island. There's nothing quite like seeing the snow-capped mountains, hearing the water lapping on the beach with bald eagles flying overhead, and seeing orcas or even humpback whales breaching in the Strait of Georgia as the sun sets in the distance. This truly is a magical part of Canada, and we feel lucky to call this place home. If you enjoy our channel, we'd appreciate your support. It's completely free to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with someone you know, and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you, and we hope you're having a great day.